Hey guys, this is John with Fire from Standard Tutoring, and in this video I'm going to explain elimination. Um, remember from the previous video, I explained substitution and elimination more as an overview or a review of the in-depth you know, reactions, but now I'm going to go in more in-depth with elimination looking at E1 and E2 mechanisms. So with elimination, you have either E1 or E2 reactions that can happen. E2 is that um, bimolecular reaction, E1 is the unimolecular, where the leading group leaves at the beginning, and it's two steps to form the double bonded product. The E2, it's all in one step. So if we look at E2 first, we're going to see that what's going to happen is the base is going to come in, take the beta hydrogen off from the beta carbon, the double bond is going to form, and simultaneously kick off that leaving group. Now, in the mechanism I have written down here, you'll notice that the H that's being taken off is kind of anti-planar to the leaving group here. And I'll explain more in depth what that means with these considerations over here. And so the product being formed is this double bonded product, the E diastereomer, but because there are two H's here, we could have that Z diastereomer. Okay? Elimination of the other H after rotation would lead to that Z diastereomer. With the E1 here, what's first is going to happen is the leaving group is going to leave. Okay? It's going to cause the carbocation to form there. Now, after the base comes in and takes off the H, the double bond is going to keep, come down and I'm going to close off that you know, open shell there. But remember, there can be rotation between that alpha and beta um, carbon, this bond right here, which would again lead to the Z, the Z diastereomer. But the original product formed here is the base coming off, forming down that double bond. It's this E diastereomer, where on the opposite side of the double bond. But this bond here can be rotating, and so elimination of the other H would cause the um, other diastereomer to form. So now let's go more in depth into E2 considerations. Okay? There are two E2 considerations that you can take into account. The thermodynamics or the kinetics of what's going on in the reaction. So if we look at thermodynamics, we're really thinking, well, the more substituted double bond is the one that's going to form. Remember that substituents are something other than H's. So a double bond that has less H's is more preferable to form than a double bond that has more H's. Okay? Therefore, beta carbons with the fewest H's will lose its H fastest in E2. So, if we look at the second consideration here, it's going to kind of, kind of contrast with thermodynamics. Okay, if you have kinetics consideration, you're not really going to be looking for thermodynamics and vice versa. With kinetics, you're really looking about that anti-alignment, the planar thing. P orbitals must be in the plane for the pylon to form. That's what was going on in this mechanism here. The P orbitals were in the plane together. This was anti to this, all right, and therefore it's going to happen faster to eliminate this H and kick off the leaving group. That's what we're going to be looking at here with Newman's. Newman's, if you recall from previous videos, you can really look at the spatial arrangement and you can see that things are really lined up 180 degrees together. Um, so you have a kind of anti-alignment there. And I'll explain that in a bit. But what to note with the kinetics here is that bigger bases are driven toward less hindered H's. So if we look at an example with a big base, T-butoxide here, T-butoxide has a kind of um, notation of a BSB, big strong base, and we'll use that as an example of our big base here. Well, here's what our molecule starts off with. We have our alpha carbon here, because we got our leaving group. The bromine is our leaving group here. And we have sort of two beta carbons that we'll take into consideration here. This beta carbon, or we'll call it beta 1, okay, this has three H's off it. It's a CH3. This beta carbon, beta 2, only has one H. So you'll notice that there's a difference in these beta carbons. If we look at beta 1 elimination, this is our kinetically favored uh, consideration we're going to take into account. So we're going to be looking at, well, what's the configuration the planar configuration that will be available to form the double-bonded product. So this is where our Newman comes in handy here. I've written out what the Newman projection is down this bond here. You'll notice the front carbon here is that CH3. There's all three H's. And the back carbon, this alpha carbon, has the bromine anti to one of the H's. You'll notice it's anti 180 degrees together. So that elimination product is going to form where if you eliminate this H, we're going to form the double bonded product here that has the R1 group on the same side as the H over here, and the R2 group is the same side as the H right here. You'll notice I have it like that. So that one product is going to form because of the anti-alignment between this H and the bromine. So remember, if you're thinking about kinetically favored conditions, you have to be thinking about P orbitals aligning, and you can use Newman's to look at how that will work. And that's what we have here. This H is anti to this leaving group, the bromine. Now, if we look at the beta-2 elimination, what's going on with this carbon? Well, there's only one possible anti-alignment, okay? And that's this one that forms this product here. You'll notice that on the same side, it's the Z, right? On the same side of that double bond here. So there's only one possible alignment here because there's only one H present. 
So if you have to rotate it, then you have to do that to get to that line. So we have two beta carbons with beta H's that we need to take into account. There's a difference between these beta carbons, so there's going to be a difference in products here. You'll notice that there are two different products based on the two different elimination schemes that are happening. And you can use these considerations to take into account what's going to be happening with those schemes, right? Thermodynamics, kinetics, you're talking about anti-alignment, or you're going to be talking about the double bonds that are going to form, whether you want a more substituted double bond, or if you can get one that isn't as substituted. Okay? So elimination, you have E1 and E2 products that can form. Again, have considerations of what's going to be forming products, whether thermodynamic consideration or kinetics. And um, that is it with elimination. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, thank you for tuning in. And uh, I love Orgo, and so can you.